about what would happen or could happen to me, like the cab driver taking me somewhere that w- was not my destination. Gonzo, the Coast Guard years, New York, episode one. Take a cap, they said. After spending some time at home over the Christmas holiday, at least I think it was over the Christmas holiday, it was time to pack up my bags and hop back on a plane headed for Coast Guard Electronics School in Governor's Island, New York. The trip to the airport was pretty uneventful, so was the plane ride. And you know, this was the sixth time I had been on an airplane in the last two years, which for me is a ton. I mean, before the Coast Guard, I hadn't flown at all, at least not that I can remember. And for those of you that have forgotten, I joined the Coast Guard October 5th, 1987. Go back to season one, episode one. I'll admit that this particular flight was going to be a bit more anxiety filled than my previous flights. I mean... Not counting the trip to Coast Guard boot camp, that was a, that was a freaking mess. Before leaving the Thetis in Key West, I had received a shit ton of advice on how to get to the Coast Guard base from the airport, and all of these <laughs> included warnings about what could happen to me if things went wrong on my trip from the airport to the Coast Guard base. The one bit of advice that was consistent, I think. From, from from basically everyone, was to take a taxi from LaGuardia Airport to Governor's Island. I was told just to tell the cabbie to take me to South Ferry, South Ferry, which was supposed to be right next to the Coast Guard Ferry, which would take you to Governor's Island. The issue that had me particularly anxious was that I was told to make sure I didn't let the taxi driver try to screw me over. I was told how much and how long the ride would take to get to South Ferry and to make sure I had enough cash as well. I heard horror stories about what would happen or could happen to me, like the cab driver taking me somewhere that was not my destination, and then basically getting robbed and being put out in the street somewhere. Now, as a 20-year-old kid, that pretty much seemed like something I should try to uh, at least be on the lookout for or something like that. I mean, I I didn't want to get rolled in New York and be some crazy-ass statistic. I mean, besides that, I was in the Coast Guard. Some people might think I should be able to, you know, defend myself, which I'm here to tell you was a complete crock of shit. Fuck no. I was all kinds of scared of what could happen to me. If shit went down in a cab, what the hell was I going to do? Nothing. Not a damn thing. Shit. I didn't have a cell phone. Those weren't a big thing back in the late 80s, let me tell you, unless you were like, you know, a drug dealer or something. I think all, all I had to at the time was the main number to um, uh, the Coast Guard, you know, main number to Governor's Island. And of course, this was a weekend. So it's not like anybody was going to be answering the damn phone in the first place. And if they were, wh- 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 why? I don't remember exactly what day that I arrived in New York City. Pretty sure it was on a Sunday sometime early in the afternoon. I do remember, though, that the plane, when it was coming in, was coming in so low, I was sure we were going to land in the water. Which, as it turns out, that water was actually the East River that we flew over. I also remember it was kind of a cloudy day as we were flying in, and that really didn't help me very much. I mean... One day or one minute, we're flying over the clouds. The next, we popped out and bam, we're flying over the water. And we were going so slow, I was sure we were going to belly flop right into the East River. Yeah, I mean, it's not like I could tell that there was actually a runway because all I could see out to the side was the water that we were flying over. I mean, we were going so low. So slow, I, I, I was pretty sure we were done for because and in and, and the plane kind of like wobbled left and right a little bit too as it was getting I guess getting ready to land. As it turns out, I was wrong. We landed safely. And the plane taxied its way to the gate. 
on the way to the gate, I mean, it became kind of obvious to me that there was, um, from what I could tell, New York, at least LaGuardia Airport, was really dirty, at least on the outside. And I guess that's something that kind of stuck with me about New York for quite some time was that how dirty everything was. I mean, it's not to say that Key West when I was there wasn't dirty, but it was a whole different kind of dirty in Key West. I mean, you there were sweat smells and suntan lotion smells and salt air smells and all that kind of combined made things, well, less dirty or so it seems. I mean, it was okay. And, and also on the, on the way to the, the, the gate, I also noticed that there was a lot of other names of airlines that I had no idea what the names were or never heard of them before, which really shouldn't be a surprise because, well, shit, I had like zero travel experience. But this is my sixth time on an airplane in two years, so that kind of makes me, well, basically a world traveler. So after a bit... You know, the, the the plane gets to the gate. The pilot makes all those crazy pilot announcements, thanking you for making it to, you know, the, the, the airport or not making it, but, you know, for flying with them or whatever. I, I, I think I was on American Airlines. Might have been United. I don't remember. But I remember, though, as soon as the plane landed, I was instructed by the other Coasties who had given me advice on how to get to um, the, the, the governor's island was that I needed to get to baggage claim as soon as possible because someone is surely going to rip off all my shit. And so I had three bags with me, or at least in, in, in check baggage or with two bags. One of them was a big ass sea bag. The, the, basically the thing that you got in boot camp. it looks like a giant green canvas condom and a ridiculously large garment bag. And, I think it had most of my uniforms in there as well. Um, I think I was also wearing my dress uniform. I'm pretty sure I was wearing my dress uniform, which was probably not the brightest thing I could have been doing, but I'm pretty sure I did. I mean, I kind of looked like a bus driver or maybe maybe an airline pilot, depending on you know where you where I happened to be at the time. Uh, so who knows? But so I was trying to find out where baggage claim was. And uh, I had no fucking idea what I was doing. I mean, this airport was ginormous and, and people were running around. It was all fucking crazy. They were making all kinds of announcements over the speakers and I couldn't understand anything that they were saying over the speakers. Like, Who can really understand what's ever being said over those big airport announcements anyway? Nobody. I mean, surely someone had to though, but... Fuck if I could. The place was an absolute madhouse. People were going everywhere and all in some kind of fucking rush. I didn't understand it. I eventually I pulled my head out of my ass and I found baggage claim. And I'm, I'm pretty sure some poor person felt sorry for me and pointed me in the right direction. Anyway, so I got to the baggage claim, at least the place where I thought my bags were going to come out. And of course, my anxiety again, once, as I said before, it's in complete fucking overdrive. I waited, like, I'm pretty sure I waited forever. Uh, maybe not quite forever, but you get the point. I was worried that my bags weren't going to show up. I was a hot freaking mess. And when they finally did show up and I pulled them off the, um, the, 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 the carousel, I mean, now I'm thinking, okay, this is what happens. Now that I got my bags off the thing, Someone's going to like walk by and pickpocket me while I'm not paying attention or shank me or something like that. And, and this will basically leave me there to die in the airport, which, um, spoiler alert, that didn't happen. I'm okay. But now that I got my bags, I realized that I made a ginormous error in my packing it occurred to me there was no way that I was going to be able to carry these bags by myself without tripping all over the damn place or falling, and yeah, it was going to be a mess. I threw my sea bag over my shoulders and carried like a giant backpack and had my garment bag in one arm, and I had some other bag. I don't remember what it was. It might have been like a backpack or something. But anyway, I was all off balance and shit, and I lumbered over to what I thought was going to be like the taxi cab line. 
And it was. And I I really wasn't sure what direction I was going, but the, the, there was a sea of people heading out to a direction. So I just, that's, that's the way I went. I get there. It's a taxi cab line, all right? Because there's like a zillion fucking people all waiting in line. I mean, honestly, we look like a bunch of sheep or cattle all waiting to go to, you know, the, the well, you know, the, the slaughter or the, the butchers or something like that. It was a mess. And now that I was outside, it was pretty clear. New York City was dirty. It smelled and everybody was in a rush. It was loud. There was horns blaring all the damn time. Some kind of construction was going on around me. People are shouting, holy shit. Someone was always shouting at someone. I mean, they had to shout. The traffic was so loud, it was the only way to be heard. And then there was this dude outside in charge of the line of people, I guess, and directing people to cabs. And by directing, I mean, he was yelling at them to get to a particular cab. So as the line slowly moved, I just kept pushing my bags on the ground uh, along the sidewalk. And, oh, yeah, yeah, fuck. Um, Pretty sure I smelled urine somewhere on the sidewalk. And, of course... You can just you can just see that there's years of chewing gum on the sidewalk. It just looked like a, a whole layer of chewing gum. I, I bet that it was a whole different color underneath all that chewing gum on the sidewalk. It was finally my turn, and the dude's sitting there yelling at me. Um, you know, the taxi cab guy was yelling at me, you know, to, to hurry up, and, and then he asked where the hell I was going. And, you know, that guy yelled so much. He would have been a pretty good company commander uh, at Cape, uh, Cape May, New Jersey. Eventually, the 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 would be uh, company commander from a boot camp asked me where I was going, and as I was instructed to do by my fellow coasties who gave me such sage advice, tell them you're going to South Ferry. So the dude yelled at me a little bit and said, pointing me to another cab, and so I you know lumbered over there, pushing my bags over there. The cab driver gets out and, you know, he was gracious. He was going to help me with my bags, threw them in the back of uh, the trunk. And now I'm freaking out because, holy shit, this is how it happens. They separate you from your stuff. And I, I was, this, this was the first of string of bad things that were about to happen. I wasn't wrong either. This was like the first step. I get into the cab not the first cab I've been in. I was in cab a few times in Key West, but that was a totally different experience. This cab, there was a big ass plexiglass between me and the driver. It had a little small little flippy door thingy so you could pass money to the driver or, or drugs maybe or something like that. I don't know. There was also tons of small little signs everywhere warning you not to smoke, don't drink or anything else like that that would leave the cab dirty. Trust me, the people that were in the cab before me clearly could not read because this place was, it, 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 again, it was dirty. It was New York City. The driver asked, where are you going? Said, I was going to South Ferry. He yelled back and said, Westbury? <laughs> you want to go to Westbury? I said, no, South Ferry. Then he hung his head out of the, of, the, of the driver's side window to get the attention of the, the yelling, screaming taxi cab man. I yelled over to him I wanted to go to South Ferry again. I didn't hear what the driver had said to the other dude, but he started yelling at the driver. And then something about that the driver shouldn't be working the airport if he didn't know where he was going. Okay, so... This is the second thing that told me that things were not going to be going well. I was sure everything was going to go straight to hell from this point. But the taxi cab driver basically had no damn clue where he was going. I mean, like, no idea. He said something to me. I, did, I, I don't remember what he said, or maybe, I, honestly, I just probably didn't understand what he said. Let's just go with, I just forgot, okay? Um... But the guy in, ended up just taking off, and um, I mean, we weren't out of the airport, and I was sure I was going to 
wind up somewhere, you know, some back alley bleeding to death and no one would hear anything from me ever again. So, yeah, it's not like I was nervous or anything. I mean, I had no idea how to get to South Ferry. I know he had no idea how to get to South Ferry. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to die. There's no way around it. This, 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 this was a the, the cab ride to hell. So, well, while the driver was, well, driving, um, he asked what I was doing uh, in New York City. I explained I was in the Coast Guard going to electronics school here in, uh, in New York. And honestly, um, it was nice that he wanted to make conversation and, and he seemed to be genuinely interested. Or so I thought. And then it happened. Not knowing where I was exactly, the driver pulled over into some residential complex or apartment complex neighborhood. He paused the meter. He looked back at me and said he needed to go talk to someone. Apparently someone he knew who could give him directions to South Ferry. He got out of his car. Holy shit. This was it. This is how it happens. He gets out of the car. I see him walk over to someone. They both look in my direction. I, uh, yep. Yep. This is it. Now that they're, they're planning. Holy shit. Holy shit, 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 shit. They are planning how they're going to kill me. I mean, I'm sure they just saw some young kid in a bus driver's uniform who willingly got into his cab. They knew I was easy pickings. I had no idea what to do. So I did what any one else who's completely clueless. I waited for them to come back to kill me. As I'm sure you've guessed, they didn't kill me. The driver, however, did come back to the cab, a smile on his face and telling me he knew exactly where to go now. I think he said something about the route we were taking, but uh, again, I didn't know the roads. I wasn't really paying attention. Um, I was just too freaked out that, you know, I was sure that this was it. I was going to die now. They were just going to toss me in the, um, in the street somewhere and that'd be it. On the way to South Ferry, one of the things that I did notice about the cab in almost every cab um, in New York uh, while I was there, the driver had this mat of beads uh, that was somehow magically woven together and it was, you know, between him and uh, the driver's seat. Well, like so many things at my age and limited experience, remember I grew up in Fauquier County, I had no idea what it was. To compound my total fucking ignorant country ass, I thought I, I thought that it was some weird beaded thing was probably a religious thing, connotation. I had no idea. As it turns out, though, these beaded seat cushions, which is which is what they were, beaded seat cushions, were supposed to massage and keep you massage your back and keep you cool. Uh, because the, the cab drivers basically drove all damn day. So honestly, I can see why they would have these things. It, it makes sense, right? I mean, the beads gave you airflow between the, the, the faux leather seats and the driver. And I don't know if I want a bunch of like round beads, you know, pressing against my back. I mean, I mean, I suppose it felt good. I have no idea because, um, you know, I have, I've never gotten... Take that back. I've only gotten a massage once in my life, and that's a whole different story. Um, it wasn't nothing weird or anything like that. It was in an airport in public, so it was sort of, you know, it was all on the up and up. Um, yeah, as a matter of fact, I think my, one of my uncles uh, had one of those uh, wooden beaded mats uh, in his car, too. But that was a long time ago. As a driver made his way to South Ferry. I mean, I saw piles and piles of trash everywhere. I mean, they were stacked on, on the sidewalks and some piles were so high, um, it's like they almost got to the second story of the building that th they were piled in front of. And as you get through the city and you get to different, you know, intersections and stuff, you just see lines of cabs all over the place. I mean, they were on every single street. It was mind-boggling how many 
you know, taxi cabs there were to any one place. Again, I never experienced anything like that before. So it was all kind of new to me. And one of the things that I think all cab drivers, at least in New York City, have in common, I think they all are mildly force sensitive. Because like the moment before a light went from red to green, like just before they start beeping their horns, like basically getting everybody all geared up to start going. It was crazy. And they also did this thing like if the driver is in like the center lane and needed to make uh, an illegal left-hand turn or the, the, the drivers, all of them, I mean, without fail, they would like lazily hang their hand out the window and flick with their finger or just kind of wave over. And it, it cars magically moved out of the way and these cab drivers would inch in and then make these, well, illegal left turns. But, because I thought they were illegal, but what the hell do I know? I'm just from Fauquier fucking county. I make fun of Fauquier county a lot. I'm so sorry, people. But if you grew up in Fauquier county the way I did in the late 70s and all through the 80s, you'd, you'd feel the same way. The driver, to his credit, got me to, self, uh, got me to South Ferry. Um, and uh, honestly, I, I'm shocked that I made it. Um, that was basically all in one piece, though I may have dropped some mud back there at that residential apartment area, but we won't talk about that. Um, he actually dropped me off closer to the Staten Island Ferry Terminal, which really is a short walk if you don't have anything in your hands. But since I was carrying all of my worldly possessions with me, it was going to be a long ass walk. Um... And by walking, I mean more like waddling, well, maybe a lumbering waddle, if that's a thing. I kind of headed in like a direction, and eventually someone, uh, I remember, um, was a lady, in fact, with, um, she had dark hair. And I think she had it in a permanent, uh, which was a thing back then. Either that or it was, a, or it was really wavy hair, uh, but I'm pretty sure it was a permanent. Um, she asked me if I needed help. And I mentioned I was looking for the Coast Guard Ferry, and she just turned around and pointed to an entryway, uh, which is like 20-ish feet away from me, that had a, a little sign on it. And I, I guess your average person would have seen the sign that said U.S. Coast Guard or Governor's Island right above the door, uh, but I was not in any particular mental state Um because, you know, I, I basically escaped being, um, you know, murdered and left to die in the back of some alley somewhere. It was weird. I thanked her. And no, not thanking her was the weird part. But when I actually made it through the door and into the lobby, I, uh, I felt safe. I was among my own people. Or so I thought I was. I get into the lobby and the people waiting there looked about as downtrodden and bored as like everybody else I'd seen in New York. These people look like they'd had the life sucked right out of them. I, wh what the hell have I gotten myself into yet again? It's like, why? What's wrong with you people? They looked up like when I walked in, um, well, they, they, they looked up to see who had stumbled in there and, and basically caused a moment of chaos because that's kind of what I did because my bags were flopping all over the fucking place. And then they started ignoring me and going back to doing, well, nothing. There's nothing to do. I mean, these people look depressing as shit. And then there's, okay, so there's this guy who is behind some counter. He, he looked like, a, you know, it was one of those counters where you could, get like bus or train tickets or something like that. I assumed he was the guy in charge and I was kind of close. I told him who I was, why I was there, showed him my Coast Guard ID. And he said, cool, have a seat. Uh, you're going to want to go to building, blah, 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 blah. I, I don't remember the name of the building, but he didn't actually say blah, blah, blah. He actually provided, you know, useful information. He said the, the ferry was, was on its way. I don't know. It's going to be 15 or 30 minutes. I don't remember. Uh, but it was usually no more than 30 minutes, though, um, unless it was at night, like we are as a night. I think it was once every hour, but whatever. So basically, 
I did what I always did when I was in the Coast Guard. I was in a rush to get someplace just to sit there and wait. And yeah, yeah, there's nothing else better to do than just to sit there and wait. Yeah, this was not looking like it was going to be a whole lot of exciting times here uh, in good old Governor's Island, New York. When the wait was finally over, you could tell that the ferry was coming because, well, people started standing up. Like they, they, I think these people are also force sensitive too because uh, they knew. And um, although I figured out what the giveaway was, um, the ferry also happened to be a car ferry, so people started seeing cars come up like this this well driveway, which you could see the cars coming up. Uh, through the glass doors um, that I had come in initially. So maybe they weren't so force sensitive. They just, you know, you know, were paying attention and I wasn't. So you go out the glass door and you make a right and you walk down the sidewalk as cars are, you know, driving off the ferry. And of course I waited um, till everybody else had uh, gone first. Cause one, I didn't know where I was going. And two, I really didn't want anyone to see me lugging these bags like a damn fool. And as I get closer to the actual ferry, I notice that there's really this long ass flight of stairs on the starboard side, right side of the ferry for you non uh, nautical people. And I'm going, fuck, I'm going to have to carry my bags all the way up the damn thing. There's there was, so there's no way I was going to do that in one trip. So I, Drop my shit. And of course, you know what? Nobody offered to help me. These people, they, these people are assholes. So anyway, I, yeah. So I make it to the top. And once I'm there, there's, there's another section where you can actually go indoors. But no, I didn't do that. I opted to stand outside on the starboard side and um, look at my new home for the next few months, or at least, you know, taking my surroundings. The Statue of Liberty was over there. That was way cool. That was the, I think that was the first time I'd ever seen the Statue of Liberty. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure of it. And, you know, I did what everybody else, you know, does. Like, hey, I want to, how, how the hell do I get over? I want to get over there. So, yeah, I stood there. I tried to act all cool and stuff. Like, I've done this trip a zillion times. I stood there trying to look all stoic and something like that. I wonder, though. I wonder if people actually knew how fucking clueless and scared I really was. You've been listening to Gonzo, the Coast Guard Years, New York, written and produced by Tim Gonzalez. And I'm Nicholas Gonzalez, the voice guy. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode of Gonzo, the Coast Guard Years. 